going to do a video, another video, all about movie reviews and today's movie is Allegiant. Allegiant. First things first though, we have a brand new camera and we are so excited to use this. It's so HD. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of unusual because yeah. um, we can just try and get things done a lot more um, quickly with uploading our videos. Yeah. Also, there is a few backlog of videos which we'll put up as well as the new video. So there'll be a mix of old camera and new camera. So bear with us. Divergent series. It's based on the book series by Veronica Roth, and I say loosely based. It's dystopian and a bit futuristic in this one. Yeah, it's it's kind of stepped away from the d dystopian theme and gone a bit sci-fi, don't you think? Yeah, it's a bit more futuristic sci-fi type. Yeah. It's not how it is in the book. It's not how I imagined it at all. No, it's it's like very very different <laughs> like very different what was your opinion on the book when you first read it considering claire read it before me and she didn't really you didn't really like it did you mm. because before i went into the series i i was getting annoyed at katie because she wasn't really telling me anything about the series so what i did is i researched it just so i knew so i knew the major spoiler at the end of the book and stuff already going into the book um, because I just felt like I wanted to see how it was before I read it. I love, it's like one of my favourite book series now, but my least favourite book is Allegiant. And that was just because it's a lot slower than the other books on how it gets into the action. There's a lot of explaining that it needs to do that I think isn't actually needed. I think there's enough explaining in the older films and the older books that sort of just clarify that all up. But yeah, the last ten chapters are the best in this book because it just, it just builds up to this amazing ending which I will defend until my last day of how good this ending is and yeah, it works really well. My opinion on Legion is when I read the series I really, really, really thoroughly enjoyed the first two books and Sergeant will always be my favourite book and then when I went into Legion it was very slow at the beginning as you said and it was kind of, I, I think the first couple of bits of it where they are trying to get out of um, Chicago and trying to get over over the wall and to see what's over there. And as soon as you get over there, it's kind of it's kind of like you wish you had gone back to like so you can get more action and, and things. But some of it, yeah, wasn't needed at all, and some of it was. But I don't hate it as much or as you know as most of the fan base of Divergent series. Um, yeah, like yeah, it's the same. I don't hate the book. Yeah, it's not so. a hate. It's more of a you're used to so much action and things happening in the first two books that you expect the final to be like Mockingjay, I guess, from The Hunger Games because Mockingjay was a complete, like, utter explosion out of the book series and many people hate that. So it's kind of like you either want one or the other and even, even so there's going to be people that don't like it and people that do like it. So Divergent has a continual colour palette throughout the book uh, books and also um, in the films. So for example in the first one there's a, like a blue, silvery, black yeah. colour palette. It's a lot like the Twilight series. There's, yeah. There's a, there's a colour palette to it. Yeah, it reflects the book yeah. theme. So oh. for Insurgent, I think it was a blue and green. It wasn't as much green as it yeah. should have been I think, but the colour palette for Insurgent is definitely like a, a green and blue. Legion <laughs> um, is orange and red, which in a way, now I think about it, is the theme colour of the book the anyway. Book cover, yeah. So it just so sort it of makes sense, sense about why it looks like Mars. Yeah. I mean, when we were watching the trailers, it was kind of like, why does it look like Mars? Why is it so <laughs> futuristic? It's I'm so, so confused. Yeah. This is not my book. But what I love is the director has um, done with the costume designs. Now, there's a part where Tris is working for David. He's, she's helping him to um, find out more about her DNA. And 
the color, the color, like the color of her dress is white, and that's because she's converted to his side. So once they, once they arrive, they're in like white clothes. Everyone else is in like these dark black palettes. When you get down to, um, you know, the. Yeah, whatever something. It's but yeah, the color of the palettes are quite dark, and then. At the end of the film, near the end, when she betrays David, her costume is completely changed and she's in this black suit and I noticed that like straight off. Yeah. Like, she's wearing black. Yeah. And in that way it shows her defiance against that. So I love that idea. I was gonna say I love I love the fact that as you said, the symbolism of the white is kind of like she's under his um, influence or like grasp kind of thing, you know, like she's innocent. Yeah, and and that's also to represent the fact that she is the only one who's pure, mm. according to David. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the pure people are wearing white, and then, yeah. you know, Tobias, who is... Yeah, even though the guy in the lift... Defected? Is that what they call it? Defected or... Damaged. Damaged. You know, the pure guy in the lift, Matthew, he wears kind of a grey all the time, but yeah. like it's undecided. Yeah. Well, that's what it kind of reflected. Yeah, I know it probably doesn't that. mean that, but that's what, that's what, like, it was grey, so it wasn't fully white and it wasn't fully black, yeah. and you notice that he was a good guy. I also really did like, um, the radioactive war, um, oh, yeah, soldier, you, yeah. soldier uniform. We can tell when it's a contaminated zone because the suits turn red yeah. to protect the person who's wearing them, and, and I found that very interesting when they got off. Um, when when four went to visit the fringe, the fringe that's it. <laughs> Cinematography of this film. I felt that the CGI wasn't great. There are a few scenes where you're just like, oh my goodness, that's pretty cool. Like the ships in this are yeah. pretty good. We're pretty, the whole, pretty decent. Yeah. The disc things as oh, well. I really love those. They're really cool. I th as I say, I think the one thing that absolutely annoy you, well not annoyed me, but kind of irritated me was the bubbles. Oh yeah. Like, I completely get them now, but in the trailer I was like, when, when I watched the trailer, I thought that was going to be instead of the aeroplane scene. Yeah. Uh, I don't, because um, in the book, Triss goes on the plane, but Four doesn't. Mm -hmm. and, and she's like, oh, what is it? He's missing out on all this. But that doesn't happen in the, the film at all. Um, and I, I thought in the trailer, when I watched the trailer, I thought that was going to be it. Like, they're going to be in these bubbles floating around over Chicago and the rest of it. But you don't get to see that. The scene that I absolutely hate, cinematography wise, is the part that is slow motion shot where the, the group have come the, over the over only the slow mo bit in the film yeah. I think anyway. and they go is someone following like I can't remember the line like they're thinking that someone's following them and then suddenly this vehicle from Chicago comes over them and it looks so out of place and oh wait, it no, looks... there's two slow mo ones the one where the, the, the um, car gets flipped over when it just explodes oh yeah the car oh, yeah. but yeah yeah I totally agree but yeah, is it, and Both the guy in the, he just looks like he's been superimposed in oh, it's just yeah. so bad. I think the best actors for me, personally, was Ansel Elgort, who plays Caleb, Naomi Watts, who plays Evelyn, and Shailene Woodley was good. She's always good. <laughs> um, she, she pretty much holds these films up. Matthew, who is played by Bill Skikars, I have no idea how to say that last <laughs> name. But he's the new character, he's the one in the lift. The guy in the lift. Yeah. <laughs> he was a very interesting character. Yeah. I think my favourite um, actors in this film would have to definitely be Miles Teller, who plays um, Peter. I thought, I know, as you said, he's in it for comic relief. He, he is, really. But, and the fact that I think with the books he gets a lot of character development yeah. as we were talking about. It's kind of his natural side of the actor coming out in his character. Yeah. He's like bringing all of his jokes and um, every time he was on screen you know that something was going to be... He was going to say something. say something. And even just the smallest thing would... I'd just pick up and it'd be like, oh this is hilarious. It's, it's, it's brilliant. really love Sh Shailene as Triss. She did a lot in this. I think the only scenes I wasn't so keen on her acting was when um, she and David were going to go to the Providence and, and she was telling for 
I think that was the bit where I was just kind of like, oh no, I'm, actually, I'm looking at uh, Shailene and thinking that's actually Shailene rather than Triss. She does turn around earlier than she should have. I noticed that everyone. Yeah. He's about to say he says something, but she turns around before he says it. Yeah. And I was like, why would you do that? that was <laughs> yeah. Really I, bad just, reaction. I don't know. I felt I felt that scene was the only scene where I didn't really picture it as Triss. Naomi, Naomi Watts. Watts. Her. I think her acting. Definitely, definitely was much better than Insurgent. His favourite actors in this film. Not least, like it's not his fault, it's the direction's fault, but um, Peter's character. Now, I, I think he was amazing, like his comic relief was perfect. What I felt though was the problem is they were trying to show two sides to him, like really badly. Like in the book, you hate him at this point. You absolutely hate him, and then at the end of the book, he redeems himself yeah. in a way. You realise how um, damaged his character is, and I felt like in this one, he swapped between those two I, I characters definitely agree with that. way too much. Like he was comic, and he was on, you know, Tobias's and Beatrice's yeah, side. Yeah, he was trying to befriend both sides and just then, to get yeah, somewhere. Yeah, and I, I felt like it didn't really work. Like yeah, just and he changes so quickly at the end as it well, does. just because the gas comes in. Yeah, like, like he thinks he's fine, but then the gas comes in. And he's like panicking. I was like, yeah. okay, maybe you're late. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like, if he's in a situation, he tries to get himself out of it with with the best of his mm. ability. Yeah. <laughs> Nita, played by Nadia Hi Hi Nadia. 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 Um, she's really good. Like she had the same qualities that I felt that she had in the book. But I thought she wasn't used as much. Like her role in the film was just to sort of be information. I felt bias. I felt they took two things out of her character from the book. One, the fact that to, she tells people. Well, no. One, one to you know help train Paul. Yeah. And the other one to kind of show this kind of love, um, romantic yeah. possibility. They were shown in two scenes. And that scene was when she was realised, oh, I hate David, I'm gonna help you. Yeah. And I, you know, from the flirtatiousness when she was before training, and then obviously the training. There was no bond, yeah. possible bond, where Thor could have thought, I could actually fall in love with you. Because yeah. there is that kind of bit in the book. Where he's debating it. Yeah. Debating it. Because he feels while, like yeah. Triss is. Because he's no gone. longer divergent, he yeah. feels like he's lost that connection with Triss. I also didn't like how they announced that to each other as well. How. Um, because in the oh, book scanning. it's in a lab yeah. together and they're both going through all these tests and then Thor's kind of realising, oh, so that means I'm... It's we're not... Oh, it's I'm, a shock. I'm not damaged. It's such a shock yeah. and in he, the book because you're like, it's not a divergent. Like, it's an absolute shock in the book, but with yeah. the film it just sort of rolled it's just kind of It's kind of, oh, your scanner doesn't work because you're missing, missing a little line. And it's, yeah, it's also kind of like Thor has to figure it out for himself rather than find out. Like, he... He, he goes through this turmoil and so does Triss and Triss, that doesn't happen in the book because they mm. don't, ha that kind of relationship doesn't happen in the book where they've kept this secret from each other. They get found yeah. out together so oh, and that was Thor goes off on his own turmoil rather than hating, I know he hates the fact that she goes up to see David every now and again. Yeah. But. That was something else I didn't like, the fact that Triss is the only one who's pure. Yeah. You've got to go into this film like you kind of haven't read the books because yeah. Um, Veronica Roth has definitely changed mm. and separated the books. They've made them individually equal. I think mm. the, the point of what she's done is what she didn't do in the books and she's grown up a bit and gone through the development of the films and realised actually, no, I want the film to be what I would have wanted the book to be like. Because mm. you can't really go rewrite a book whereas you can redo a film. Yeah. And that's what she's done with this. And that's why there is a, a fourth film um, instead of having Allegiant Part 1, Part yeah. 2, there's a fourth film and it's called Ascendant. Now, Allegiant, the film, is solely... Allegiant. Allegiant. It's, the plot has been lifted from Allegiant and, and tweaked a bit. Tweaked, well, kind of a lot. A lot. <laughs> there's no more of Allegiant, apart from a few things that didn't happen in the film that happened in the book, which we will get from Ascendant, yes. I believe. Yes, so when Ascendant comes out, it's going to be a completely different book that doesn't yeah. exist. We have never... We're going to go into this film solely not knowing what's going to happen but with a bit of hope because what things that have happened in the book of Allegiant are yet to happen in the film if they do and there's still plot things that plot lines that Claire and me believe or hope happen in the film otherwise it just feels like Veronica Roth has just 
lied to me this whole time. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. so yeah, this is going to be the spoiler section. So basically, um, if you haven't read the books and seen the film, then it's going to be really spoiler. 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 So leave now if you haven't yes. read, Follow watched, you out of the goo, out or of the go, whichever way is your exit. <laughs> Monica Ross characters that are missing from this film are Zeke or Zach. Zach so I'm, I'm, say, I'm not even sure. I can't remember. But he is Tori's brother. Um, there's this weird character who. I don't even think his name is mentioned. He works for Evelyn and he's got like the mohawk. And I was like, who the heck are you? So I just to shaved. Yeah. The one that I absolutely in. hated his character. Yeah, I might be, I don't no know idea who he's supposed and he, to be. He was like acting on his own authority half the yeah. time as well. It wasn't even under Evelyn's kind of jurisdiction. Dictation. Yeah, dictation or anything. It was just kind of like, yeah. oh yeah. We need to go, you know, it was just more like, yeah. I've been put in this role, I can do what I want. And I didn't really like his ego, no. No, no. Um, character. Uriah, Uri yeah. has only about one or two scenes, mm -hmm. which he doesn't really say much at all. And considering he wasn't in the first film, which he should have been, and yeah. has only been introduced in the second film, I feel like he needs a bigger part. And I think that that will come in ascendant to make up for the first film. And the major character Spoiler! that needs to... Happen is the death is the death of Tris of Tris Pryor. She, I'm sorry, I know now, it breaks my heart. Of fans are like, every time I'm gonna hate it. Should have had an alternative ending. I'm sorry, no. The reason I like Divergent is because Tris dies. Yes, it's because the, the, she anyone dies could die, and that's for her the, cause. Yeah, and she dies. Yeah, and you know you have all these superheroes and males that always die, but it's never the females because yeah. they're supposed to be precious and fatigued. Yeah, like. and. Uh, it's it's really nice the way she dies. Mm. Like you have a sense of hope. I mean, okay. The she Being dies shot the really annoyed me. The yeah, she gets shot. She's, but then that's that's also the key point of the yeah. books where you can get killed at any point. The ending, which is so beautifully done and so well written, written where Tobias conquers his fear and, and does the zip line. Takes on the zip line. Yeah. I mean, when I watched the scene of Tris going down in the zip line in the first film and in the first book. The music that was played over her going down the zip line was so lovely. And I said, I said to Claire in the cinema or after the cinema, I can't remember. But I turned to Claire and I was just like, that needs to be the same song that they play, that they play for when Four goes down it. And then he has, it has those shots where it's um, Tris going down it yeah. and going down it. So he's and kind of like seeing. It looks like yeah, it looks like a memory. I think the other thing I really like. Is Change-wise, is the fact that Tris actually gets to say something to the city. Like in the oh, yeah. books, she's always one, and that's what we get to see at the beginning of Allegiance. She's always one who doesn't want to be, you know, public, but she yeah. feels like it's come to the point where she has to be. Yeah, as leader. Joanne says to her at the beginning. Yeah, like sometimes we need one that doesn't want to be one. Yeah, kind of thing. and that's what I really like. Okay, so our rating of this film, I personally would probably rate it out of five. Okay, out of five. <laughs> Yeah. I'd say three and a half. Yeah, I'd give it a three point five as well. And I'd say it's the second best movie so far. That is the end of our video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I hope that you got a lot of art out of it and I hope that you go and see um Allegiant. And that's good. Let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah. And let us know if there's any of the videos or should I say films that you'd like us to review to the series or we would definitely consider them all. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please subscribe to our channel and comment below. We love you guys and we will see you next video. Bye! Bye. A little bit more. We I need was. to smile. I know, but we're always smiling for when we do. Oh, my like videos, okay? Go. Allegiant. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey guys. guys! Oh, I hate doing the stupid. Uh, that's what that's I know. What do. That's what I do. You do. I just um, go, hey guys. I know, and I do, hey guys. Hey guys, because I don't fit. Hey guys. Hey guys. We should knock my face out. That'd be funny. Just go, hey guys! <laughs> no, no. Oh, flipping out. Ow. Sorry. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> that is the one. There you go. <laughs> hey, you've been. Oh, yeah. Just oh, go. Go again. Right. Please subscribe to our channel. <laughs>